Welcome everyone to Gamer Mill. Today there is a bunch of stories that I really need to cover, so as usual when I have a lot of them, I thought I'd do more of a talking head video. And let me know in the comments if you like these style videos ever so often, or if you really just want to see my normal videos. Either way, we have an update. Ryzen got way cheaper, Intel's Battle Mage, AMD's new APUs are incredible, new NVIDIA GPU, and the RTX 6000 GPU is pretty impressive. But first, if you love keeping up with all the latest PC hardware news, don't forget to subscribe to GamerMelt. Also, make sure to hit that bell icon so you're notified when they're released. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that AMD themselves, coming straight from Lisa Su, stated that, quote, we undershipped in Q3, we undershipped in Q4, we will undership to a lesser extent in Q1, referencing to shipping GPUs and CPUs. And that obviously led a ton of outlets, including me, to assume that this means they're doing it to keep prices higher. Well, AMD actually responded to this, and here's what they had to say. This comes from their VP of Communications, Drew Prairie, where he states, quote, we are shipping below consumption because there is too much inventory in the channel and that partners want to carry lower levels of inventory based on the demand they are seeing and their expectations for their business. The idea we are doing it to keep prices elevated isn't accurate. Our client ASP was flat year over year and that is due to mix of CPUs shipped. So. This is essentially them saying, no, 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 it's not this. It's actually that there's just too much inventory out there, so we're shipping below consumption. And I do somewhat see that probably being one of the reasons, or at least a big reason, but my only issue is that we're talking, don't forget, over two quarters moving into a third quarter. And of course, with inflation going up, the crypto crash, all of that, obviously they had a massive dip in sales, but for them to take this long obviously seems a bit odd to me. Plus, you could easily argue that the reason why the partners want fewer is so they could keep prices high. So you can still somewhat argue this is the case, but like I said in my last video on it, it really is a bit of a gamble to do that just because, for one, if there's, say, another big jump in demand for one reason or another, or if, say, NVIDIA decides to pump out quite a bit of GPUs so they're able to lower the price, they sell way more, but they lower the price enough, the profit they get from selling way more outpaces the profits they lose by lowering the price. So there's always sort of a balance with this, and obviously having competition out there is a really good motivator not to do sort of nefarious things. Either way, this is at least AMD's take on the situation. Obviously, they aren't denying that AMD's Lisa Su did say this, but they're putting a little bit of a different perspective on it. And with that said, no matter how you feel, if they are doing it for pricing, at least for some of their Ryzen CPUs, it's definitely not working. As you can see right here, their Ryzen 7 7700X CPU just dropped in price by $100. It is now below $299, selling on Newegg and Amazon for $298.99. Now, I do believe you have to either have a code for Newegg, then you have to um, select, yeah, it says you have to select a $40 discount, but either way, they are there, and it's definitely a drop from MSRP. And of course, regardless of stock and things like that, I would argue they almost had to do it, given how good Intel's 13th gen CPUs are compared to it. For example, if you look right here in productivity, we can see that the 13,600K, the 600K, the i5 model, actually beats out the 7700X, and the gaming benchmarks actually show the 7700X with PBO getting fairly close to even the 13,700K, which is significantly more expensive than $300. Even the 13,600K is more than $300, so this was needed, but it is definitely now a fairly good deal. And I will say that I'll have some affiliate links to this down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Moving on, Intel is now discussing their Battle Mage GPUs. For those who don't know, Battle Mage is set to be Intel's next generation of discrete graphics cards. Specifically, it's going to be their XE2. And in a new interview with Intel from Hardware Lux, they gave us some pretty good insight. 
Starting things off, Intel actually talked about how its first generation XE graphics IP had four separate products. We're talking XELP, XEHPG, XEHPC, and XEHP. Now, if you remember, they ended up canceling the XEHP because they felt that the HPG and HPC architectures addressed the segment well enough. What's really interesting is that during this interview, Intel actually talks about the fact that doing it this way, where there's multiple different segments made it much more expensive and much harder to release their products on time. You can see down here, as we go forward in our roadmap, we realize this is a very, very expensive, the QA process and the segmentation. The thinking was we needed to differentiate our IP and customize it per each segment. They then said, we we're going to just have one thing and it goes everywhere unmodified. Now, they, they do say one thing here, but I do believe that they are actually talking that it's just gonna be XELPG and XEHPG. So kind of technically two things, but maybe they just separate these and they are effectively one IP. They're just lower cores, things like that. Regardless, it seems pretty clear that Intel underestimated just how much it was gonna be to make these GPUs. Hence why they were so late releasing, but given they've learned their lesson with Battle Mage, maybe, just maybe, it'll be much better and will release on time. With that said, this also somewhat makes me worried about the talks of Intel until potentially coming from Moore's Law is dead, that they're potentially gonna be scrapping their discrete GPU business. And given we're talking, you know, just one real architecture, it's sort of sounding like that. Either way, Intel is clearly moving forward with Battle Mage, and hopefully they'll have something that can compete with higher end GPUs. And speaking of competition, we actually got one of our first benchmarks on the Radeon 780M, which is Intel's iGPU or integrated graphics from RDNA 3 inside their newest APUs. And let's just say I can't wait for this to come to desktop. As you can see right here, we first had this from Billy Billy, where someone claimed that the Radeon 780M and Time Spy would get 3000 with LPDDR5X. Well, they later actually shared some scores. Now, as you can see, this does not have 3000 for the graphics score. It's actually 2800, but that's because this is that DDR5. And when we look, we do see this is the Ryzen 9 7940HS with the Radeon 780M. So this is with DDR5, but according to this, with LPDDR5X, it gets 3000. And let's just say that's really impressive. When we move over here and compare it to Intel's XE graphics with 96 EUs, we can see we're looking at over double the performance. In fact, it actually gets fairly close to the desktop GTX 1650. So we're essentially talking these lower end GPUs could effectively become completely pointless when this releases. And of course, I recently talked about their next gen APUs, potentially according to rumors, being way, way faster than this. But even talking this generation, this newest one that AMD recently announced at CES is already set to destroy the lower end GPU market. And next up for today, Nvidia actually has yet another RTX 3060. As Tom's hardware kind of goes over, They've got a lot of 3060s. We're talking the 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 one, then a recycled silicon one from the 3070 Ti, then of course the 8 gigabyte model and one with GDDR6X. Basically, Nvidia has released a ton of versions of their 3060, making that whole comment about, oh, well, we don't want to confuse you by having two 4080s completely baloney. Either way, apparently this other model comes with the full GA106 die, meaning 3,840 CUDA cores. Not only that, but it apparently has a much higher base frequency, though very little difference in boost clocks. Oddly enough, this one apparently comes with 14 gigabits per second memory instead of 15 gigabits. So all around, this is a really odd 3060. Now, I will say that the original person who discusses, this originally comes from one of Tech Power Up's database editors, and he claims that he actually originally saw this back in late November 2020, but didn't know the core count and thought that it was just an engineering sample. Either way, this could be a new upcoming GPU because apparently the SKUs are not displayed on the company's site, so they just have generic names. All in all, Nvidia may still not be done with the 3060. 
And lastly for today, Nvidia recently announced their new RTX 6000 GPU. For those who don't know, this is more of a workstation GPU, but it is pretty interesting. For one, it has a much lower TDP compared to the RTX 4090 at 300 watts, but it has more cores with 18,176 CUDA cores. It also has 48 gigabytes of GDDR6. What's interesting today is that we actually get one of our first benchmarks of the GPU. And as you can see in TimeSpy, it got a whopping 30,518, which is definitely pretty impressive, though of course it is, as video cards mention, around 15% slower than the RTX 4090. But don't forget that this bad boy has significantly lower TDP. So even slightly lower than the 4090, that's really impressive. So while that does it for today, what do you think about Nvidia's newest RTX 6000? And what about AMD's newest APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.